it's time for your horror medication. Before I begin my story, make sure you're not going to be interrupted. Check that you're secure. Make sure no one or anything can get you. Then get comfortable. Just close your eyes and let your imagination do the work. I've just moved along your ear canal and I'm now inside your skull. Adrian Written and narrated by Bleeding Critic When Adrian was a teenager, he was low down in the pecking order of a small group of wannabe gangsters. If only he listened to his gut instincts, he would have kept well away and spent more time enjoying himself and not being bullied into starting fights with strangers or being chased by older lads with baseball bats. It was December 1982. The excitement of some New Year's Eve party was growing. It was just three days away. It was early evening and Adrian and two of his dominating friends were hanging around outside number 51. One of the gang members encouraged Adrian to hang on to the outside of his car for a laugh. Adrian presumed his mate would just roll his car for only a few feet. Adrian presumed wrong. The idiot started to drive his black VW Beetle slowly along the residential empty road with Adrian hanging off the side, standing on the small protruding side panel below the passenger side door. The black beetle accelerated up the road to over 30 miles an hour. Adrian saw the houses lining the road flash by his eyes. He also watched his life speed by from birth to this desperate moment. The car drove faster and he pleaded to his idiot friend to slow down because his hands were hurting from trying to hang on and his kicker boots were slipping. Adrian doesn't remember what happened after that. His body protected him by shutting down. He blacked out and fell off, head hitting on hard road. Adrian later woke up in hospital. He only had a slight hairline fracture and subsequently was kept in hospital for observation. When he woke up in hospital, Adrian saw his white jumper that he wore at the time of the accident. There was so much blood he actually thought the jumper belonged to someone else that had their head blown off from the neck by a shotgun. He was lucky. He could have died. It occurred to Adrian in his later years that his now dead parents didn't contact the police or the tossered driver's parents at the time. Adrian knew this was because his parents couldn't cope with confrontation. Adrian lived, loved and worked hard all his life. He was a decent geezer. He had the perfect wife, a wonderful child and a rewarding job. Like so many of you listening now, throughout his life Adrian fought through some difficult situations that other people would not have been mentally able to survive. It was only recently, in fact it was last week, that Adrian thought again about what he witnessed on his own during that cold, black, lonely night back on 31st of December, New Year's Eve, 1982 when he was kept in hospital for observational purposes and he had his own room on the 12th floor. He remembered lying in bed and he could look out of the large hospital window thinking about all his family and mates celebrating, drinking, singing and vomiting in the new year. During that lonely night, it was very late when he woke up sensing someone else was in the room with him. Adrian smiled to himself before opening his eyes. If only it was his fantasy turning into reality. The night nurse slut visitor to suck him into the new year. The hospital room was pitch black. Only the outside orange street lights and 
some distant cheap flashing to the beat disco lights provided enough brightness for Adrian to see the two older men sitting on the windowsill. The window was wide open. The two men had actually had their legs hanging the wrong side of the window, 12 stories high. Adrian couldn't feel the night cold and he immediately relaxed thinking this is a dream because real life would not forget about such a crucial detail. The two strangers' demeanour was friendly and slightly drunk. One offered Adrian some whiskey from a bottle. Adrian remained in his hospital bed and declined the kindness from one of the unexpected visitors. One of the men said, What a beautiful night. Adrian, would you like to have a laugh with us? We're here every night drinking, laughing, and to be honest, we have some pretty cool conversations, don't we? The other guest continued, and we're very supportive to one another. Then suddenly, another male stranger popped up from outside the window pane. Adrian giggled because it was a funny pop-up entrance. He thought, oh, a bleeding floating vampire. Don't let him in. Did this third visitor climb up the outside of the building? It spoke. Hello, mate. I hope you're feeling better. Adrian smiled. He was enjoying the friendly dream company. It's been a lonely few days and this crazy experience was a welcome one. Adrian, come on, mate. All you have to do is jump out of this window. There'll be no pain. And then you'll be able to hang out, literally, with us. We were patients in this hospital just like you. We all jumped and, to be honest, it's the best way to leave now, to jump now, we'll cheat all the bad times and the bad people that your future life holds for you. You'll avoid any heart attacks, broken hearts and sudden redundancies. Celebrate your life by taking control of it. End it here on a high. All three encouraging strangers and Adrian were giggling and laughing. Adrian thought the dream script and face detail was excellent. Very good special dream effects. He listened to them chatting and suggesting he jumped and Adrian refused. Eventually his eyes closed and his body rested, his head wound repairing itself. In the bright morning his new friends had left. Wow, what a dream. That was the dream he would never forget. And what a headache. Was it the accident, or did he have a drink? Adrian was 16 years young in 1982, and now he's in his late 40s. He realises that some dreams are just dreams and they wash over you, and because his dream all those years ago in that hospital was so vivid and remembered in such detail, he knew it wasn't a dream. What happened then in 1982 actually stayed with him forever. That special dream with the three friendly faces was genuine. It actually happened. As many years went by, he thought about that particular night when those three old strangers just appeared. Adrian loved to revisit locations from the past, like old schools he attended, homes and that park where he lost his virginity. 31 years later, yesterday, Adrian actually revisited the 12th floor of that hospital. He actually remembered the room he stayed in as a teenager all those years ago. Adrian went inside that single hospital room. It was currently unoccupied. It was as he remembered. After 13 minutes, the room was empty again and Adrian didn't exit out of the door. If you're unfortunate now, or in the future, and have to be kept in hospital overnight, don't be worried about the empty time being alone and vulnerable. I'm sure Adrian and his drunken friends will come and visit you for a little chat.
You've been listening to Adrian, written and narrated by Bleeding Critic.